We begin in the Middle East, in Syria. We are tracking reports of an Iranian military commander killed by an Israeli airstrike. Syrian and Iranian media report the strike destroyed a building in Damascus, killing several other people. Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard says five of its military advisors died. The strike was in a neighborhood home to several embassies. It comes amid widening tensions in the region as Israel pushes ahead with its military operation in Gaza. The Hamas-run Palestinian Health Ministry says 25,000 Palestinians, most of them civilians, have died since October. Journalist Rebecca Collar joins us from Berlin now with the latest news here. So, Rebecca, thank you for joining us. What more do we know at this point about these strikes in Damascus? Um, so, as you said, Hillary, Iran's Revolutionary Guard says, is now saying that five members of its forces were killed. We don't have the rank and the position from the Revolutionary Guard itself of all of these members, but what we are hearing is that um, at least one member was very senior head of an uh, intelligence unit um, in that force. Now, both Iran and Syria have blamed Israel for this strike, saying it was the Israel, Israelis who carried out this strike. Israel, of course, has not commented on that. It very rarely comments on individual strikes like this. But, of course, Hillary, uh, we know that Israel has carried out numerous strikes over the last few years that it says either targets uh, Iran, Iranian, uh, that are either Iranian targets or, or targets belonging to the Iranian allied Lebanese militant group um, Hezbollah. So uh, because of that, it is very likely, even though we have not heard from the Israelis, that this was an Israeli strike. But of course, we cannot uh, confirm that. Now, we're also hearing from Iran's foreign ministry uh, against accusing Israel of this of this strike, saying that this is an attempt by Israel to destabilize the region and saying that is and saying that Iran will respond to that. And of course, uh, because of that, this strike and also these comments now from Iran's foreign ministry uh, are, are raising uh, concerns again about the widening of this of this conflict, Hillary. Well, and let's talk a little bit more about that, that potential <laughs> widening here, Rebecca, because there are more strikes around the region between the Houthis and the U.S. You have Israel and Lebanon. So what can you tell us about those and where the concerns are at this point for a potential wider conflict? Yeah, just to put it, first of all, in a bit of context, since October 7th, we have seen increasing confrontations and increasing attacks between um, these countries or by these countries and militant groups uh, that consider themselves part of the axis of resistance. So that's Iran, it's uh, Iranian allied militias in Iraq, Syria, of course, Hezbollah in Lebanon, um, and uh, the, the Houthis, of course, in Yemen, and they have been attacking both Israeli targets, but also uh, uh, U.S. targets and U.S. military targets. Now, just, uh, just now, we've heard um, in the last couple of hours that there has been another attack on a base holding U.S. troops in Iraq, the Ain al-Assad base. There has been around 100, more than 100, really, uh, strikes carried out um, against U.S. targets in Iraq and Syria. Uh, we, of course, have the daily exchanges of fire between um, um, uh, Hezbollah and other militant groups in, in, in Lebanon and Israel. And then, of course, uh, this confrontation with the Houthis. So the, the Houthi uh, rebel group in, in Yemen have really uh, uh, found this leverage point over the international community by attacking shipping in the Red Sea, and they have really, um, um, you know, uh, made uh, Red Sea shipping much more expensive. It means that many ships are having to grow out the southern tip of Africa. Insurance costs have gone up. And because of that, uh, the UK and the US, uh, backed by other allies, have carried out these strikes against uh, Tahuti forces in Yemen over the last couple of weeks. Um, and, you know, the Yemenis have been um, defiant, saying that they will continue to carry out these attacks on shipping in the Red Sea as long as the war continues in Gaza. And we've just heard in the last hour or so here, Hillary, uh, U.S. CENTCOM, the U.S. military, have said that they've carried out another strike uh, early this morning on Houthi targets. Now, when you look at the picture of this, all of these different flashpoints uh, across the region, Hillary, you can really see why there is so much concern that this conflict is going to widen, widen out uh, uh, um, in the region. Okay. Well, Rebecca, thank you so much for keeping an eye on all of it for us. Journalist Rebecca Collard there in Berlin. Let's stay on this story. I want to now bring in Sajin Gohalp. He's an international security director at the Asia Pacific Foundation, and he joins us now from London in the UK. So Sajin, oh my goodness, where to begin? So much to talk about here. Uh, as you were just hearing from Rebecca, there has been an Israeli airstrike in Damascus, has killed at least five of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard's military advisors. As we heard there, we don't necessarily know the rank. Let's start big, a little bit more broad, and then go smaller here. Are we in the midst of a wider regional conflict? Well, Hillary, this has uh, been the challenge because uh, the whole conflict from Gaza and Israel has spread. It has proliferated, uh, whether it is in Lebanon or in Syria or Iraq. 
uh, or the Houthis in Yemen. We are now looking at other conflicts that have spawned. We are looking at retaliatory strikes. Uh, we're looking at proxies being used. Uh, so the uh, conflict has expanded. Let's be in no doubt about it. And unfortunately, we don't even know how further it is going to continue to uh, proliferate. It is very disconcerting that the Middle East is in this crisis with all the different actors with their own competing agendas and strategic interests. If we stay on for another second here, these Iranian military uh, commanders who've been killed, according to state media, Iran has condemned the strike and it says that it reserves the right to respond. So what would be your assessment here on what sort of retaliatory action we might see from Iran? Well, Iran in many ways has already been uh, responding, whether it is using uh, Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon to uh, launch strikes into northern Israel, or the Houthis that have been uh, trying to target uh, Israel with their missiles, not so successful. That is why they opted then to go after the uh, shipping uh, lanes and the cargo vessels in the Red Sea, which has been far more destructive uh, economically. So Iran may not be able to directly target Israel, but it can through proxies, through uh, militia groups, and also try and hit at some of Israel's uh, allies by impacting on uh, commercial and financial interests. You mentioned there, of course, Hezbollah, and all of this is happening as an Israeli drone strike was carried out against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. So when you take that, when you take, about, take some of the other things you were just going through there, if we continue to see this sort of escalation, do you think there's the possibility here that the West could get directly involved? The West is getting um, involved um, because of what has happened with the uh, Houthis, for example, targeting the shipping lanes, making the Red Sea inaccessible for cargo vessels. We have now seen that the US, the UK have been launching uh, airstrikes uh, in Yemen uh, against uh, Houthi uh, interests. Whether that actually impacts on the Houthis or not, we'll have to see because they seem very determined. The other aspect where the West is already being uh, dragged into this conflict is you are seeing uh, Shia militia groups, both in Iraq and Syria, targeting U.S. Uh, installations, military installations. And the U.S. has already reacted to that with an, uh, an attack, uh, with sorry, with an airstrike on uh, those particular Shia militia groups in Iraq. So you are looking at an escalation. The West is getting dragged into this. And it will continue to potentially proliferate because there aren't just these entities. You've also got other non-state actors, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, which is based in Yemen. The ISIS affiliates as well are seeing opportunities where they could potentially escalate and heighten tensions. So the U.S., like you say, is involved. Of course, we know that the U.K. was was also part of some of those initial airstrikes on some of those Houthi targets. Do, do you think even that could expand, though, that you could see some of these other allied countries also get more directly involved, especially since you say uh, it might be up for debate at this point how effective some of those strikes on those Houthi targets have really been at sort of tampering down uh, what we've been seeing in the Red Sea? Well, Western countries have to be very careful not to get too dragged into uh, this conflict, uh, even though there may be strategic compulsions, it concerns about national security. The fact is that there are various entities that want that opportunity to try and inflict casualties on U.S. or, or British forces. And they will look to use propaganda to heighten uh, and, and, and elevate those tensions and exploit them uh, for their own uh, domestic consumption. Uh, we're already seeing, for example, as I was mentioning about Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, they are producing more and more propaganda. They have restarted their Inspire series, which is designed to uh, provoke lone actor terrorism in the West. Uh, now, if that happens, if it succeeds, it may result in the West thinking that it has to then take further action against uh, entities inside uh, Yemen. And the, the problem is, is that we've seen that Countries like Saudi Arabia that had launched a, um, a war in Yemen to try and unseat the Houthis, uh, they were unable to do that. And the Houthis proved to be extremely resilient. And AQAP also benefited from the melee and the conflict as well. So, Hillary, this whole situation is very problematic. Uh, it shows no signs of stopping. And it will continue to grow and manifest in ways that we can anticipate 
and unfortunately ways that we aren't fully going to understand until it actually implodes.